Where are you driving at, man? Where, where are you driving right now? Right now, I'm driving in the state of New York. I'm headed back to uh, Minnesota. Oh, fuck. Bro, New York. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, you in the state of New York or New York City, New York? Nah, nah, nah. I'm in the state of New York. I listen. I don't go into the. I don't go into the boroughs at all. That is not for me. I'm not that driver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even even for the even for the extra hundred bucks, somebody off your hundred extra bucks. Extra hundred bucks. The hundred. Extra hundred bucks. They, they say, hey, they say <laughs> if you do the boroughs, we give you an extra hundred. Would you do it, driver? Uh, extra hundred, bro. You playing with me? Fuck playing with me. Nah, I ain't doing it for no hundred, bro. Bro, bro. I'm that the I'm, 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 you gotta, you gotta throw me a check. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the dispatcher, bro. What, what, what would it get you to go down into the boroughs, bro? We talking about Brooklyn, <laughs> Best Five. We talking about Staten Island. We talking about Manhattan, bro. <laughs> what, 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 what to get you to go down in those boroughs, bro? Actually, first off, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need me a police escort in and out that mm. place. You hear me? And mm. then you can throw me an extra 300. And I need, you know what I'm saying? Just throw me a little bit on the side just for my time. You know what I'm saying? I need about an extra 20 an hour while I'm in the city. Okay, okay. So you, 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 you saying, you saying, driver, let me make sure I get this straight now. You need an extra 20 an hour plus an extra 300. And you want me to call New York City police. To give you an escort down in them boroughs. That 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 that's all you need. Man, that's gonna be easy for you. That's gonna be easy for you. I'm gonna negotiate. What do you mean? I'm, look, I ain't gonna settle for less. Uh, well, I I I tell you, driver. You know, I I appreciate the the negotiation, man. But unfortunately, the company is not gonna allow me to to uh to extend that offer to you. So I'm gonna have to take a pass on you and find somebody else that can do it for that hundred. Hey, right, listen, listen, if you ever reconsider that, if you ever reconsider it, give me a call. I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get the job done right the first time. All right, driver. I'll do that, man. I'll keep you in. I'll keep you in consideration uh, when we when we run out of rookies to con to go down there for that honey. You, be like, you better say it. You better say it. And I, you know what? You shouldn't even be using them rookies like that. But you know what? Somebody going to take it. I'm gonna make them happy. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, driver, but we, we gonna have to. Them, them rookies is gonna have to learn some kind of way. Listen, I will. Listen, you know what? Hey, I'm, 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 I'm gonna mind my business. Yep, I'm gonna mind my business. <laughs> <laughs> that boy said, that boy said, I'm gonna mind my business. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm gonna just stay over here. I can only drive one truck at a time. That's it. Oh, my man, <laughs> DJ Boss in the building. <laughs> what's going on, man? What is going on? What's going on, oh, <laughs> my G? What is up with you, man? Shout out to you. Um, I, I see you from the great state of Georgia. That's that's where you that's where you from, born and raised. No, I was actually born in uh, Gainesville, Florida. Shout out to Florida, but uh, I was raised in Latonia, Georgia, East Atlanta, DeKalb County. Okay, okay. So what 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 brought you up from Florida to Georgia, which is which is only the next state over? Mom, right, right. Like really, I mean, I was make sure anyway. Well, my mom and my and her husband at the time, you know, they moved us up here when we were kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like eight of us, two of them, six kids. So they moved us up here, I guess, for a better opportunity, better chance at life. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. moving moving from the from the great state of Florida, which I was stuck down there about a couple of weeks ago. But uh, moving up to uh, <laughs> moving one state over to Georgia, which, I mean, you know, you got to. If 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 better opportunity, better life, better living situation, uh, uh, presents itself, you 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 gotta pack up and and head down I ninety five until you get to the Georgia until you get to the Georgia state line and do the damn thing, right? Oh no, nah, see, it was I seventy five north for us because you know Gainesville is right off I seventy five, so it was just a straight shot up there. But uh, I mean, I guess it was a better quality of life. Um. Uh, I don't really know, you know. I mean, it, it, it seems like normal life to me. I was a little kid, so anywhere I went to, I adapted to the Um, I will say it was more chaos and craziness, but uh, that's about it in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, man. So let's uh, 
let's hear a little bad story from you, man. Where, you know, what, what you was doing before you got into trucking? Ah, uh, well, what I was doing before I got into trucking, I was uh, just working at Sam's Club. You know, I was about what? Eight, I was about 19, one on 20. Um, I started with Walmart and I was with them ever since. Um, I tried my hand in college. I'm not saying it didn't work out for me, but it didn't work out for me. So trucking was always a thing that I wanted to get into. All right, how long ago was this? Ah, I've been driving going on nine years next month. So, uh, whew. geez, how old am I now? Lord, I have to think. I have to ask myself that. <laughs> uh, I was 29, so I was 21. So that was about, that's been about eight years ago when I, you know, you know, really took the first step into actually working on becoming a class A CEO. Okay, okay, nine years, ten years in the, in in the game so far. Uh, so far in the game for the for the ten years, man. What what have you what what has what has trucking changed since the last time? Uh, since you started up until now, what has trucking changed? I I, I can't really say much. I mean, you know, it, it, it has given me a chance to see the country. I will say that. Um, it has given me a chance to make a lot more money. Uh, from the age of 21 to now, I mean, literally, I have made a lot of money. Uh, and I've been smarter with that money. Now, that's another story for another day. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, you just meet all kinds of interesting people. It's like being a flight attendant, except you're on the ground and you're moving in an 80,000 pound vehicle. So, more money, um, chance to see the country. Um, it has definitely opened up opportunities and doors for me to see other countries. So, you know, I've just been taking my chance with all of that. Like, just living life. All right, all right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, so check this out, man. You a TikToker? How long you been? How long you been rocking out on that? Oh man, TikTok. Oh man, I think I think I've been going hard on TikTok now for about a good. Let me see, because the first video I posted was the one that was the one that made me go viral with over four hundred thousand views. I want to say I've been rocking out on TikTok for about a year or two now. Uh, when the first video went viral, I want to say it's been about a year ago now. So, yeah, about a good, strong year, year and a half, I've been rocking out with the TikTok thing. All right. So, you said, uh, you, so, you, you know, I, I, I see a, a consensus here with, uh, with TikTok. I, I feel that any, if if anybody hadn't got on the TikTok bandwagon, you know, like last year or during the pandemic, I, I think going viral now is a little bit harder than going viral back then. Do you do you agree with me? Yes and no. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time when it comes to TikTok, you just have to find something you're very good at and very passionate about, and just talk about it or or do whatever it is that you do. Um, but when I went viral, I would say yes. Uh, it was a lot easier for people back then. Um, because everybody was sitting at home. There was nothing to do. And as you can see, you know, when I made my first video, I was actually doing nothing but standing in front of a truck. And I rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. And I deleted and, 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 and just recorded, deleted and recorded until I felt like I got something perfect. And it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. So, yeah, I would say that uh, it was a lot easier back then during the pandemic because everyone was sitting at home. But nothing better to do but look at their phone. Now a lot of TikTok truckers is is like all over this app, man, and I I really feel that you know the the TikTok truckers that's that's on this app is it's really for entertainment purposes. Like I mean, you know, people can't really learn anything within a three minute time frame. But I got this I got this TikToker that I want you to listen to, and I want your opinion on. Hold on. But speaking for my generation, we don't want a career in anything. We want to change the social construct of success or retirement. Uh, if you are a truck driver, nine times out of ten, you're gonna die sick and broke. All right. So this TikToker says that uh, if you want to become a truck driver, you're gonna die sick and broke. <laughs> What's your opinion on that? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that's a lie. That's 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 a lie. Uh, truck driving has definitely came a long way. Um, truck driving isn't what it, people have this idea of trucking that you know you you don't make any money. You're governed by the FMCSA, and 
you know, everything you do is controlled and you can't eat healthy, you can't work out, you can't do things like that. And everything that she said was a lie. I, I don't know if she has experience in the industry at all, but the new age truck driver, the millennials, the generation Z, you know, the, 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 the younger generation, we have actually, you know, put a new face on truck driving. Like, everybody thinks that we all look like this fat, sloppy, unhealthy individual, and we're turning that around, and it's like, no, we don't look like that no more. We don't We don't behave like that anymore. You know, we're out here taking care of ourselves, eating better, doing everything to look better, and with the money, that's a lie. I, I, can, I can guarantee you that. Uh, I posted on one of my stories on TikTok about the checks that I was making at FedEx alone, and that was just clear evidence. Like, you can make money. Trucking is an industry that has taken off and has expanded and it's going to continue to grow for years to come. It's not going anywhere. The industry is a billion-dollar industry alone. Well, not a billion. I think it's like a trillion because a billion is really an understatement and a, a small value. But the trucking industry continues to grow because transportation will always be needed. And there's money in this industry. All right. She, she got more. Hold on. But don't back the cheese. Don't believe the hype. If you retire out of trucking, it's because you couldn't clear your medical card. It's because you, you're past the six months on a medical certificate. Like, because you can't physically get back into the truck. Because you she says that the only reason why you retire out of trucking, bro, is because you can't clear your medical card. What, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I can't say I agree with her because... Trucking is something that once it's in your blood, it's in your blood. No matter how much you want to retire, no matter how much you want to let it go, it's in your blood. I've actually let trucking go before, but it's, it's in there. It's, it's just in there, and you want to get back behind the wheel. I'm not saying people do not retire from trucking. I'm not saying people don't quit trucking altogether and never come back. But, no, you can actually retire from this industry. This is this is definitely one of the well-paid industries, and you don't have to go to college to get a degree to make the money that a lot of college graduates make and beyond. But she we, says a lot of us make more than college graduates. But but she says that the only the the only reason why you will retire out of this industry is because you can't renew your uh, your uh, DOT card. Do you agree with that? that, that no, I do not agree with that. Uh, there's there's so many drivers out here. I'm I'm still appalled at how some of these drivers even pass their medical uh, examination. But you know that's that's neither here nor there. But no, nah, that's I don't think passing the DOT physical exam is an actual problem in this industry. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, enough of that. Uh, nine years in the game, man. How many how how many uh miles that you logged as a as as a driver? Now, to be honest with you, I don't even know the actual count there. I do not know. So usually when I'm just filling that application, you know, I just say, yeah, I ran about 400,000, 500,000. You know, I'm like right at the halfway mark. Because usually at 10 years, you ran over a million miles. And I'm literally, you know, two years, actually a year away from my 10-year mark. So I just really just give a minimum. I actually, I've never logged the actual miles and actually – uh, tally them up and say, "Hey, I ran this many miles." I, I really don't know the time. All right, that's what's up, man. So let's uh, let's get at it right quick, man. So, you know, I I, I came across you on your TikTok, and it's and and it's always good. Like like I said before, I'm not I'm not a fan of the app, but I do come across some good people, and I do have some awesome conversations with you guys. So again, thank you for coming on and chopping it up with me, man. Let's let's uh. Let's get into the top ten companies that you uh that you drove for, man, and and uh what's your ratings and your opinions on it? Go go ahead, start. So let's rate some of the companies that I work for. Starting with CR England. You know, I thank CR England for helping me to acquire my license, but all in all, I give CR England a three out of ten, wouldn't recommend. Schneider Dollar General account. All in all, Dollar General was backbreaking work. I would not recommend this account to anyone. Cisco Foods, College Park, Atlanta, Georgia. Listen to me. When I tell you run, run fast as you can. Get the fuck Marta. Marta, Atlanta. Now, that job was pretty fun, but you were underpaid, under, under, underpaid. I didn't even give them a fair chance. KLM Transport. Frozen Food Express, also known as FFE. So, this was a decent job. I loved it. Uh, Quest Global, bring your ass here, boy. Lynn did trucking in the oil field. 
Amazing people, bomb ass work. Spartan Nash out of Midland, Georgia. Starting out with this company, they were really great with the pay. They were an amazing company, amazing home every day. Town Creek Land and Timber. Amazing people, small company, and my favorite fed ass. The company I work for, SEE Cornerstone, 10 out of 10 would recommend. He's an amazing boss. Oh, you want me to start the whole list again? You want me to do the list for you? Yeah, do 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 the list for me, man. If we can we can uh, dissect it. All right. Well, first off, let me go ahead and throw this out there. Let me say this: driving. I am not proud of my uh, resume, but listen, I do not regret it because I have experience and I can help others out. But let me start out with CR England. Uh, I started with CR England back. In all right, so back in 2013, I started with a company called CR England. That was the company that actually helped me acquire my license so I could become a doctor. Um, I rated CR England. To be honest with you, I rated them on the video, and I do not remember, but I'll rate them right now. I gave CR England a 3 out of 10. CR England was not a company for someone who wanted to build a career in the industry. Um, they paid you little to nothing. Um, they would have let me team. They didn't give me the option when I begged for it. They would have given it to me. And back then, I think my checks were actually cutting out at like one to two hundred dollars per week after all was said and done. So they were basically robbing. Me. Was that was, was um, that wait wait was that one hundred two hundred three hundred dollars a week after you trained? That was one to two hundred a week after. Okay, back in two thousand and thirteen. Okay, so after you got your license. After you you went in, you got your license and everything. Uh, you, yeah. you you went out with a trainer, and then after yeah. the trainer, you were still garnering a hundred, two hundred. How how many miles you was putting in with them? Wow, like um, I stayed with them about a month after training, and it was so long ago. I cannot, like I said, I can't really remember how many miles, but. I was surviving off their $100 cash advances every week because in training, they were only paying us $400 a week. So once we got out, we ran miles. And I think one mile, I, I, I can't really remember. It was so long ago. But I know I ran a bunch of miles this week. And I'm like, okay, I'm expecting at least $500. I'm expecting at least five. And when my, when my check hit, after they took out the hundred dollar cash advance, you know the money that I borrowed, my check was literally about a hundred to two hundred dollars. I used to stress out so bad that the only way I could survive was by driving their truck around so I could fill it up with gas, get my fifty gallons, and so that I could get my hundred dollar cash advance. Wow, bro, that's crazy, man. I, and I heard, yeah. sto I heard horror stories like that. Now you would agree that you know just to go in, just like I tell everybody else. Just to go in, get your CDLs, and get out, right? Get out. With those startup companies, well, actually, no, I'm, let me take that back. With those startup companies now, because of the experience and the job hopping and career company hopping that I have, I tell everybody to stick it out for at least a year. Get all of your endorsements, stick it out with one company for a year so you can make yourself more marketable, and you can sell yourself to companies after your year if you want to go local or you can choose to go anywhere else. Bro, you can't do you you, you can't do that. Maybe, maybe back then, but you, you can't do that now, man. A hundred, two hundred dollars? Well, Family. see, now companies are so desperate. Well, I, I've heard stories where companies are so desperate now that they're offering minimum guarantees. So back in 2013, I'm telling you, when I came into the trucking industry, it was a lot different than what it is right. now. Right. There wasn't too many minimum guarantees. So they started changing that up over the years because now you have more younger people getting into the industry and the turnover rate is like hell of high. And they're like, no, we're not doing this. This, you, this is not what y'all promised us. So now they have to do something to keep you in the door. So mm -hmm. now they're like, hey, we're going to give you $1,500 a week to guaranteed or something like that. Okay. Which I wish they would have did it back then, but yeah. yeah. All right, man. So what's, what's the next company? Next company, Schneider Dollar General. I gave Schneider itself, um, I would rate Schneider about – a six, a six. I wouldn't go higher than a six. I would definitely recommend Schneider, but Dollar General, I'm giving Dollar General a one out of ten. I was on the Schneider Dollar General account, and that was some backbreaking work. I dislocated my shoulder on the account, and the only reason I left Schneider after being there for two and a half years, training 18 people on the account, and being labeled one of the all-star drivers for the account, um, the only reason I left there is because they wouldn't take me off the account to allow me to go do something else that would benefit me considering I dislocated my shoulder on that account. So even even with a dislocated shoulder, 
and you told them like, look, man, I, I I'm not able to I'm not able to do, you know, do the damn thing no more. They 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 refused to take you off the off off the load, even though you was hurt. Yes, my my um at the time my driver manager, um his name was Keith. I'll never forget that man. He I was one of his all star drivers, and what they consider what he considered an all star driver is with Dollar General. A lot of people do not know this. Uh, Dollar General, uh, I was moving packets, moving everything by hand, packets, road trainers. These road trainers can be extremely heavy can weigh up to a thousand, two thousand pounds. Like literally they can weigh up to that much and they were extremely heavy. And, you know, I let him know, like, so the all-star is basically, I was pulling five trainers a week. I was a minimum averaging 15 stores per week. So I was doing 15 stores per week and I was ranging anywhere from a thousand to 1800 miles a week. So is this, uh, is, is this solo or with you training? I was solo a uh, majority of the time, but the 18 people I did train, yes, it was on the account. But I mostly trained them on how to unload the trailer. Some drivers, I actually had to train them on how to drive, which that wasn't what my job entailed. But whatever I had to do to get the job done. All right. So what what was one of, what, what was one of your worst experience with a trainee on the, on the dollar account? <laughs> only one comes to mind I remember this older guy um, at the time I was about 22 years old I was, yeah I was about 22 years old and there was this older guy who had been driving trucks over 20, 30 years or something like that stop, like a lot of the people stop, on my TikTok stop, 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 stop this dude 20 years in the game about to come in to do a dollar account are you serious? I'm so serious I, I am so serious this man had to be in his 60s, his late 60s, early 70s at the time. Oh, my God. And what I, I, ended up tell, happening, tell, tell the story, bro. All right. So what ended up happening was he uh, took some time off from the trucking industry. So anytime you take time off out of the industry, anything over three months, big name companies feel as if they have to retrain you and make sure you know what you're doing, which I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. But, uh, yeah, so he came in to Schneider. He jumped on my truck. I was training him, and I started having too many issues with him. Like, he was a slow driver, which I understand his age and all of that. But every like from day one, it was a headache. We went to go drop the car off at the airport and see these trucks have they're equipped with sensors and stuff like that to avoid accidents. And I had to follow him to the airport and he was in the left lane, I was in the right lane. We were coming down in Bessemer, headed to Birmingham. And he jumped in front of the truck at the last minute when the light turned yellow and he slammed the brake. And I remember in that very moment I couldn't react fast enough, but my truck picked up on it. So my truck locked his brakes up, and I remember looking to the left and looking to the right because I'm already in a situation, so I have to find my way out of it and stay calm so I can do that. So this, I remember just swerving to the right. This is a this, huh? this, this is a, a driver for Snyder that did that to you? Yes, this was a driver, and, and I knew that. It was already starting off wrong. I was like, "What the? You know, I'm I'm, I'm mad. I'm upset because I'm like, no, this is this is not happening. Like day one, we're already having problems. So, you know, he had an issue. He had a problem with setting his brakes. I think he would just forget to set his brakes all the time. So one day we're on the yard. We pull up on the yard. I'm I'm really ready to kick him off my truck and say, man, just you know whatever. But I was like, I'm gonna give him one more chance. So I get out the truck. Wait, at the DJ, customer. DJ, DJ, I, I, I want to know, I, I want to know the conversation between you and him when he got in the truck after he dropped the car off. I, I need to hear that conversation. He just, I, oh God, it was so long ago, but I remember him apologizing and constantly apologizing about what he did, um, about slamming the brakes in front of me. Uh, he, I don't know why, what made him think that was a smart idea, especially knowing he's a truck driver, I'm a truck driver, and these trucks, do not stop on the dime. But uh, I remember him just jumping in front of me, and he did it. When he got in the truck, he just kept apologizing. And I was already frustrated in the moment. Like, you're a truck driver. You know better. So why in there? You know, why would you do that? Why Why did you think that was okay? You're a truck driver. So, That's crazy. Yeah, so, All right, so y'all on the yard. What's, what's up on the yard? So we're on the yard, and I'm frustrated. But I'm going to deal with them. It's, it's almost the weekend. I go home on the weekends. And uh, I was out there talking to one of my my homies. We started together. And I will never forget, in the middle of the conversation, I was just telling him how my week is going with this man and 
how he's so aggravating and stuff like this. And I kid you not, my 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 homie. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, classic kids who went pop. Def to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales who won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart are bars, you got bops. Heard you writing Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Yellow fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.